Hi, and welcome back. So my latest blood test that was drawn on the 1st of March, 2024, also marks the 57 month point of my longevity experiment. And as we go through the spreadsheet, you'll be able to look back and compare it to all the previous results. Also, enough waffling off me, let's jump straight in and look at the results. So let's take a look at the supplements I was taking when I had this blood test done. NMN, 1.5 grams per day. Trans resveratrol, one gram a day on non-training days. So Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, sometimes on a Sunday as well. TMG, 1.5 grams per day, trimethylglycine. 1,000 milligrams of metformin. And at the time of taking this blood test, it was 500 milligrams first thing in the morning between 6 and 6.30. And then the remaining 500 was between 9.30 and 10, just before I went to bed. Vitamin D3, 5,000 international units per day. Uh, it's got there Sunday and Wednesday, 10,000. I might be going back to that, and I'll show you the reason why in just a second. Vitamin K2, 120 micrograms per day, uh, and that's MK7 version. Magnesium, 250 milligrams a day, the L3 and 8 version. Hyaluronic acid, 400 milligrams a day, and that's high molecular weight hyaluronic, hyaluronic acid. Quercetin, 2.4 grams a day. Fisetin, 2.4 grams a day. And both of these, I only take 2.4 grams a day in the first, second, and third of each month. And if you want to know why, in my um, supplement list in the description below, there's a periodic dosing uh, link, which will take you to the video explaining all of that. Dry parsley, one tablespoon in my yogurt on the three days I take my resveratrol. And then on the days I don't take resveratrol, I, ha I normally have a yogurt about quarter to eight, and I still put the parsley in. Um, Cert-6 activator, 800 milligrams a day. DIM, 600 milligrams a day. 200 between 6.30 and 7 in the morning. In the morning. Uh, another 200 at about 11, 30, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. And then the last 200 is with my 500 milligrams of metformin just before I get into bed. Glynac, glycine, and NAC, 800 milligrams per day. And creatine, five grams a day, but only for the month after I've taken my blood test. So after this blood test was completed and we got home, then I then mix in five grams of creatine into my coffee for the next 30 days. So it's 30 days on, 60 off, and then blood test, and then 30 days back on. So that's it for the supplements I was taking when this blood test was taken. Let's firstly take a look at my lipid profile. You can see here, 1st of March, 2024, total cholesterol up well into the high range, 301. And the reason for that is because my LDL has gone up quite a bit. It's now 221, up from 171. And if you watch the channel, you know I'm not bothered about LDL as a single marker when it relates to heart disease. And again, I'll, I'll play another clip here of Sean Baker talking about new studies that are coming out showing that LDL or cholesterol as a marker is not really a good marker when it comes to heart disease. My HDL, as 53.4, which is uh, well within the reference range. I'd like that to be as high as possible. Uh, triglycerides up to 133 from 73, but still below the 150. And I'm not sure why that's crept up so much because my diet really hasn't changed that much uh, in the last three months. Then we've got VLDL cholesterol. Again, that's one that I would like to keep as low as possible. That's also crept up from 14 to 26, but 26 is still well below the 40, which is the upper end of the reference range. My cholesterol and HDL ratio is in the high range because it's um, 5.6, 4, 5 is the top. And again, that it's the LDL that's pushed that up. Same for LDL and HDL ratio. That's up to 4.14. The top of the range is 3.5. The reason that's up, again, is because of the LDL. So that's it for my lipid profile. Okay, another study just came out looking at the relationship between high cholesterol and mortality, cardiovascular mortality, total mortality. Uh, it is entitled, The Association Between Hypercholesterolemia and Mortality Risk Among Patients Referred for Cardiac Imaging Test, Evidence of a, quote-unquote, Cholesterol Paradox. And so what they did, uh, this study was, was published uh, in the Journal of Pro Pro uh, Progressive Cardiovascular Disease, uh, main author Alan Rosansky, primary or senior author Daniel Berman. And so what they did is they looked at four different groups, 65,000 or so people that were referred to for cardiac imaging. That meant 
there was something going on in their clinical history that made the, the, the clinician concerned about cardiovascular disease. And so they underwent either coronary artery calcium scanning, which some of you guys are familiar with, especially a CT scan of the coronary vessels looking for calcified plaque. They underwent a, uh, the other test was a CT angiography or a CT, CCTA. Uh, so in the first group, there were 10,000 people. The CCTA group had 31,000 patients. Uh, we had an additional group that underwent something called a SPEC scanning or nuclear SPEC scanning, which is single positron emission uh, computerized tomography, some with uh, known cardio, cardio, cardiovascular disease and others without known cardiovascular disease. So these four groups came out and they looked at the different various factors and what predicted mortality. And the group that had the highest mortality, the ones undergoing SPEC scanning, so the nuclear imaging study that also had significant known coronary artery disease. These people died at a rate of about 3,000 over the follow-up period, which over that period of time, 3% of the population died. They underwent SPEC scanning, the coronary artery calcium scan, less than 1%. It was like 0.31% or something like that. So regardless of how many people died in which group, what was what, what the take-home message here is that people that had diabetes were more likely to die. It was about, uh, I think it was about an 88% increase in mortality. People that had um, a smoking history had an increase by about 67%. And people with elevated blood pressure had about a 30, 38% increase in mortality rates, okay? So these things all were positively associated with death. Now, when we looked at high LDL cholesterol, what they saw was the opposite effect. In, the, in these particular patients, people with high cholesterol fared better. People with high cholesterol had a lower rate of death, about a 30% or a 29% decrease in the rate of mortality. So again, this is the quote unquote cholesterol paradox. Let's move on to my blood sugar. You can see here, it's up slightly from 5.8 to 5.9, still now below the 5.7, which is the increased risk, which is good. I'm taking uh, one gram of metformin a day. You can see my average blood glucose has gone from 119 to 122. Um, I'd rather they stayed lower. And again, my, my diet hasn't changed really in the last three months, so I'm not sure why that's gone up. Um, what I am going to do is slightly change the protocol for my metformin. I've done a little bit of research. I'm still going to take the first 500 milligrams um, first thing in the morning, 6 to 6.30. The second 500 milligrams I normally take between 9, 13, 10, just before I climb into bed. I'm now changing that. So I will, I normally on my OMAD days, eat my meal at about 5, 30, 6 o'clock. I will take the second 500 milligrams at the same time as that to see if it can bring this down because a couple of people have I've spoken to about this said it may be that four hour gap where your insulin might be spiking or your blood sugar might be spiking. So we'll see how it goes. There's also four days in a month when we go into the city on a Thursday and do our grocery shopping. Um, I sometimes We sometimes stop off at a really good restaurant and I have a nice Angus burger. <clears throat> that comes sometimes with fries. What I will do on those days specifically is I will also take another 500 milligrams just before I eat that meal. So that's 1.5 grams a day and that's only going to be four days a month. But I'll mention more about this when I do my, my next update which will also be my five yearly update. So that's it for my blood sugar levels. Let's move on to my liver profile. You can see here the majority are all in blue, so there's no issues. This one, which is my albumin and globulin ratio, is ever so slightly low. The reference range is 1.1 and mine is 1.06. That said, a year ago in the Middle East, 1.06 was within range. So another baffling reason that some hospitals have different reference ranges. Uh, feel free to pause the video and zoom in if you want to look at the, the numbers in a bit more detail. Moving on to my renal profile, you can see here everything is either pink or blue, um, depending on the reference range that it's supposed to be in. But these are all OK, so not really much to talk about when it comes to my renal profile. Thyroid, you can see here T3 is now in black. That's because there's a third reference range they've started measuring. As long as it's between 0 0.35 and 1.93, it's okay. So all of these three thyroid markers are blue, black, and if they're in pink, then it's all within reference range. So there's there's nothing wrong with the thyroid profile. Moving on to vitamin D, you can see here it's 47.67. So still within the sufficient range, which is between 30 and 80, but a massive drop from last time from 98 
down to 47. Um, and I'm not worried that it's 98 because toxic is over 100. And you have to be over that for, for quite an extended period of time. I'm not sure why it's gone from 98 to 47 because I'm now walking and running on a Tuesday. Um, I'm biking on a Thursday and I'm walking the dog twice every day. So my exposure to sunlight has gone up. Um, remember, I did used to take 10,000 international units on a, on a Sunday or a Monday and a Wednesday and 5,000 the rest of the time. So this may be my drop down to 5,000 catching up. Um, I'm not too worried about it. I'm not going to change just yet. I'll wait to see what happens on the next three monthly test. If it's still 47, so the, the lower end, if you like, of the sufficient range, I might go back to 10,000 international units a day for two days of the week. So that's it for my vitamin D3. B12, gone from 362 up to 377, well within the reference range. So I've got no issues with that. My testosterone, you can see here exactly the same strange as it was three months ago, 6.19. The reference range for an adult male is between 2.8 and 8. So 6.19 is up near the higher number or the higher end of the reference range, which for um, someone who's knocking on the door of 60 now, I think is not too bad at all. Moving on to iron, you can see here it's up from 8 to 9. 9.5 is the lower end, so it's still 0.5 as, as far as um, being outside the reference range is concerned. I'll give it another three months, see if I can go up from 8 to 9 to 10, so I'll bring it into reference range, or at least up to 9.5. If I can't, then I probably will then start looking at an iron supplement. And the other two markers with regard to iron are well within the reference range, so not much to talk about there. My C-reactive protein, less than five, which it's been for the last nine months. Uh, anything less than 10 is good. So I'm happy with that score. My amylase, you can see from 63 up to 76, but still well below the 100, which is the top end of the reference range. So that's good. And my lipase, exactly the same for the last um, nine months. As long as it's between 14 and 280, it's okay. So 32 is also good. Nothing we need to talk about there. Moving on to my blood, you can see here everything is in the blue, so nothing to worry about there at all. Feel free to, again to zoom in and look at the scores in a bit more detail. Blood 2, again, everything in the blue, nothing to worry about there, so I'm not going to hang around in the blood. Estradiol, which is the marker for estrogen, you can see exactly the same as the last quarter, 9.86, down from 16. Um, the lower end of the reference range is 7.63, so I'm not worried about it being 9.96. I did think it may be to do with the, the new DIM brand I've started using. It seems to be maybe that it's a bit stronger. I'll give it another uh, three months. If it stays at this nine uh, number, I'm happy with that. If it starts to drop down below seven because it's too strong, I may then go from 600 to 400 milligrams per day, but we'll wait and see what happens in the next three months. EGFR has gone from 93 down to 92. Uh, anything above 90 is normal, so I'm happy with that. My urine analysis, everything here in the blue. Um, so not really anything to worry about there either. So that's it for the stats. So I think all in all, pretty good. Uh, my vitamin D took a 51 point drop. That said, still well within the reference range. So I'm going to stick with 5,000 international units per day and see what happens in the next three months. Every other uh, marker is more or less in the reference range or is only ever so slightly out. Um, so I don't think there's anything really which is cause for concern. That said, I'd like to see what you think. If you think there's a marker that should be looked at in a bit more detail, I'd be happy to see what your comments are in the comment section below.